doing the nerdiest thing I've ever done. Come with me. We're here, Canby Fairgrounds, for the Home Orchard Society apple tasting. Now, from what I understand, there are hundreds of varieties of heirloom apples um, that you can taste. The best part is I've got my trusty notebook from my friend Stephanie, um, and I'm going to be taking um, tasting notes because I am putting in an orchard and our... Um, at our little farm and I want to know what varieties um, are available I want to know what they taste like I want to pick out apples that have a certain flavor profile that I want both for canning for jams for fresh eating for pies that sort of thing so I'm going to be taking some extensive notes I already have some favorites that I um, tasted and discovered at the um, Heirloom Expo in California. And for those of you that haven't seen that video, I'll put a link here. Um, the best part about this, the HOA, is that you can select the trees that you want and you can have them graft them with scion wood in the spring on any rootstock that you want, pick them up at their spring event, their scion trading fair, um, and they're 12 bucks. So you can get an apple tree with four different branches of various varieties all on one tree. It's pretty extraordinary. So for a small orchard, that's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful way to get way more variety than um, planting one tree of each. You have to have a lot of space. And we have, I think we have like an acre and a half, so it's not a ton of space. So being efficient and being smart out there and getting all the varieties that I want um, grafted is definitely the answer for me. So we're going to go in to the fairgrounds. Um, now the reason this is so nerdy is I actually joined the Home Orchard Society. I am a proud card carrying member and um, I am looking forward to the Scion trade um, this spring, but I, I have a feeling this is going to be me and a bunch of old guys, but um, I'm seeing some families going in, so we'll see. Don't judge book by its cover, Corinne. Okay, let's go. Is this all I need? My camera, my book? I think this is all I need. I'm seeing cowboy hats. Can I make a really disgusting confession? Um, <laughs> I had to pee really bad on the way here and I was in this kind of woody area. So I pulled over to pee. I peed on my pants um, on the waistband. <laughs> it feels awful. I most likely will edit this part out of the video, but at least makes me feel like I'm not hiding something. I'm keeping my coat on. I'm washing my hands pronto. Ooh, do I have money? Let's see. I think I need money. I don't think they're gonna let me in for free. Take two, I forgot my money. But I didn't just forget it, like I forgot it, forgot it. It's at home, um, like almost two hours away, hour and a half away. So now I'm up here to the admissions. Thank goodness it's only a dollar because that's all I had in my car, which could be seen as serendipity. Um, so yeah, my day's starting out a little rough. Get my one precious dollar out of my pocket. Good thing I got my Portland errands done yesterday because I have zero dollars and I have zero license hopefully I won't need ID oh I'm kind of excited for this 
I'm a little confused. This is all horse people and horse stuff. If I have gone to the wrong place, I'm gonna go home. I'm just gonna call it a wash. All I'm seeing is saddles and barns and... Check out these little puff balls. Like little mushroomy sport guys. Ah. Hello YouTube! Hi! confession. I just drove from Hood River and realized that my money was in my other coat, but I have a checkbook. That's fine. No okay, problem. and I'm a member. No problem. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, these are my people. Um, apparently, the protocol, there's these tables in the middle, and I'll show you what they look like behind me, and they're full of apples and you basically just ask for the apple that you want to try and they cut you a slice and then you take notes and the scions that you want in the spring you can come back and have a you can build your own tree and just do a scion exchange or you can um, have them do it for you They were selling figs, so I bought two beautiful figs. I bought a, um, a Desert King and an Italian Everbearing. And those are also gonna go in my new hedgerow. And they're 10 bucks a piece, you can't beat it. At the nurseries, I think they were 25. So um, yeah, I'm excited about that. Um, I also ran into two subscribers, so that was super fun for me. Um, it always makes me laugh and surprises me at the same time. never had a fresh Thompson grape before. Um, these are the ones that are classically used for raisins and it tastes surprisingly like a Concord. It's really flavorful, yummy, yummy grape. The Valhalla is a really, really tasty, um, delicious grape. Isn't it? They are delicious. It's not ripe yet, let's see. I'll put anything in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Whoa! I need something better. <laughs> Okay, now you've got my trash. I've got a. I'm taking that one right there. That is delicious, and it cooks well. It holds its shape. Now that I don't know about because it doesn't have a sign. Uh -huh. Okay, 
I've never in my life eaten so many apples, pears, grapes. I feel like I'm gonna explode. Um, I got some fig trees and I spent about an hour talking to um, a gentleman named Will about soils. Look at these flowers behind me. That was fantastic. My tripod all set up here. There. That was fantastic. Um, I ate more <laughs> apples, pears, grapes, and what, Asian pears than I have ever eaten in my life. Um, I kind of feel like I'm, I'm sick but hungry and going to explode all at the same time, which I don't really know how that's possible, but um, I need cheese. Like I need, <laughs> I need something that's not fruit. And, um, but it was incredible. I had done quite a bit of research beforehand um, through cookbooks. Like for instance, the classic French apple for tar tartan. I wanted to try that. Um, what is it? Colville de Hiver? De Hiver. Um, and it was delicious. Ashmead's kernel is one of those apples that I hear over and over again because it's so heavily acid and so when you have a really acidic apple um, acid makes your makes the flavor of food actually more pronounced you can take a shot glass with some olive oil in it put one drop like the tiniest drop of vinegar in it shake it up and then take a shot glass with just plain olive oil taste the oil just kind of coats your mouth like okay just tastes kind of oily and depending on how good your olive oil is the one with the acid will come alive, which is why us cooks finish dishes with either lemon or vinegar. Oftentimes it just opens the flavor up. So ash meats kernel was delightfully like one of those apples where your taste buds are going, ah, um, Wixen's crab apple delighted me in California at the heirloom expo. And again, here I've ordered one of those trees for my hedgerow. Um, really fun wonderful I tried a, a pear that I never even heard of the orchis pear delicious um, of the pears my favorite is Warren and Seckel and of course I love Bartlett's I love um, Comis but those are so available for me living in a pear growing valley um, but Seckel's are hard to come by and I've never even I've never heard of anybody in the Hood River Valley growing Warrens and they're they're insanely good. Orcus was um, a pear that was just found growing in somebody's hedgerow in Orcas Island in Washington State. So another local pear. I spoke with this wonderful man by the name of Will Newman um, about soils and we probably talked for an hour. Interestingly enough, I come to find out he teaches a three-day class on soil. He's the dirt man. And so um, he was fantastic. He and his wife have 20 acres, just a couple miles from here. And we were talking about soil structure. And I, um, I've read quite a few garden books and I find them joyless. And um, it's like, it's like, uh, it's the same feeling that when I'm supposed to make a spreadsheet <laughs> and do something that's very categorical like that. Um, it's like, it's terrible. And so when I read through these garden books and these soil books, snooze, um, not inspiring, dry, they just take the fun and the life and the guts and the goo out. Like it's so sterile, it's so boring, it's so dry. Um, and so, so I just freewheel my way in the garden. Um, I often tell people when I'm out there planting that the plants tell me where they want to go and um, I can't really write stuff like that in a book. But gardening to me is all intuitive. Um, not all. You, you hear and you learn a lot of things and you put it into practice. But part of it is watching and listening and doing and, and observing. So um, a girlfriend of mine, her husband, runs 
um, it has ran some organic orchards, commercial orchards in our valley, and he's super knowledgeable when it comes to growing pears and apples organically. So I'm going to go talk to him. I've got some amending to do. I've got some holes to dig. Um, and then in the spring, I get my baby trees. I'll put them in the ground. The orchard's happening. I've been talking about planting an orchard for 11 years now. So I'm so stoked. And now I know which varieties um, I want. So you guys probably want to know this. You want to know the top. My favorite, favorite, favorite apples. Now everybody likes different things in apples. I'm not a huge fan of sweet apples. Just an apple to be sweet is nothing. Like I can go have chocolate or something if I just want sweet. <laughs> but I love apples that have some amazing, um, interesting um, component to them, a characteristic. And I really like them to be balanced with acid. So the winners today of the best apple, um, my favorite apples, they're nearly all old heirloom varieties. And so depending on your region, you may or may not have be able to grow them because of disease. Um, some of them are more susceptible to certain diseases. I am lucky enough to live in the Hood River Valley, which is like probably the best apple growing region in the United States, Washington State, and we're right on the border of Washington, um, in Oregon, in the, not the Willamette Valley where Portland is, but further over east, it gets colder where we are, and so um, it's ideal. So I can basically grow any of these, which I'm really lucky. So that is a consideration, but um, my favorite, probably one of my all-time favorites was the Spitzenberg. Um, this is the apple that Thomas Jefferson planted, like 160 of them around his property. It was the perfect apple. Texture, crunchy, acidic, sour, sweet, balanced, really appley, like that old, old fashioned apple flavor. Um, delicious. The Colville Blanc de Hivar was the classic French tart tatan apple lively, acidic, um, really strongly flavored, delicious. Bramley seedling, the highest, um, the apple that's the most hot, the apple that is the highest in acid um, content, really fantastic, fantastic cooking apple. Because there's, when you add sugar to apples, sugar's cloying and it and it brings the flavor, like it mutes or kind of mellows the flavor. So if you have one that's really acidic and then you add sugar, they balance each other out. Ashmead's kernel, delicious. And there's probably a reason that that one has been um, one of the most popular, popular apples throughout time. It's so good. Belle de Bascoupe, loved. Um, Wheeler's Gold Russet was a fantastic one, and I was told that the Gold Russets keep really well. Um, it was mild. Now, these were all picked a few days ago, so if they're early summer apples, they were going to be overripe, right? And if they're late winter apples, they're going to be underripe. So this wasn't a perfect representation of, you know, the apple in its glory. So the Wheeler's Gold Russet I'm assuming it was a little bit on the soft side, so when they get overripe, they lose their um, some of their their sh their shine. But what I loved about that apple is I could just picture it with a really beautiful sharp cheese, like a manchego or a parmesan or some little sheet of some really pungent, delicious cheese, and this delightfully kind of perfumey, nice apple. Another standout that I bought a whole tree of is the um, Wixen's crab apple. Surprisingly enough, for those of you that have ever like picked a crab apple and had their whole mouth just be like super tannic, super drying, sour, the Wixen's crab is the most lively apple I think I've ever eaten in my life. They're little. They're like this big. I mean, bigger. Some crab apples are tiny. They're like it's like a, a tiny apple like a five biter and it was 
epic and that would make the most delicious juice ever it had a little bit of tannin it was really acidic it was super flavorful it was super sweet um, total winner and Zabergo Renette was wonderful I love that one that would be an exceptional um, apple on a cheese platter and salads and that kind of um, application and I think that was it those are my winners I'll put the list of them below for those of you who are interested in um, growing apples and there's also scion banks uh, this is something that I learned a few years ago there's one in New York and this is like the germ repository and there's a couple of them around the world for um, preserving our our food heritage and so you can contact them in the spring and you can request and buy scion wood so they send you a little twig of whatever kind of apple you want and you go out to your tree and you graft it on to a branch of similar size and then you get a, a branch of whatever that is so you can have um, one apple tree that has you know 15 different kinds of apples on it let your imagination um, limit you there so that's a fun way if you only have space for one tree but you want multiple um, you want multiple flavors then that's an option I, I was uh, informed about the way apples grow <laughs> there's some that grow on spurs which is along the branch they have these little spurs that grow out and then the fruit comes off of that and then there's some that tip bear so they grow on the tip of the branches so it pulls the branches down so you want to want to make sure that you don't graft spur onto tip bear because it will make your tree all lopsided and um, vigor there are certain apples that are really vigorous growing you don't want to graft a slow growing branch onto a super vigorous one because the vigorous one will just usurp the slow growing one so basically that's what I learned in a nutshell it was an awesome experience and um, so educational I'm so glad that I made the drive even though I um, didn't have any money well I did have my checkbook thankfully um, I didn't have my ID I peed on myself I didn't tell anybody that <laughs>